Hey, what's going on everyone? Jax here, and I wanted to share some thoughts that I've been having while spending some time with the Civic Type R, mainly in terms of progress. So I wanted to break down what the Civic Type R means in 2019 versus what my Corvette means in 2002 and the march of progress that has taken place over the last 17 years that has resulted in a family hatchback with 300 horsepower and a six-speed manual that puts up similar performance numbers to a two-door hatchback coupe that was solely intended for performance. I think it's an interesting conversation to have when you look at the very different intended functions of the cars. And so that was kind of the focus of this video. In 17 years, have we arrived at a place where a family hatchback can post similar performance numbers and give you the same driver engagement and experience as a single purpose sports car could nearly 20 years ago? So right off the bat, there's a couple of things that stick out. The Corvette was from GM's dark days of the 90s and early 2000s. So the interior materials and quality are atrocious, just flat out atrocious. Whereas in the Civic, the interior materials and quality have benefited from the 17 years of progress. Not only are they up to Honda's typically high standards, but it's generally a nice place to be. Uh, the seats in particular are phenomenal. The C5 Corvette was well known for having pretty awful seats for a car with its capabilities. Whereas the Type R seats are fantastic. I mean, 100% fantastic. Could you daily drive this car? Uh, I don't mind, but if you were a larger individual, you might find the seat somewhat restrictive would be the word that I would use. Overall though, the materials in the interior are like 10 steps ahead of the Corvette. So is the infotainment system, and so is the sort of driving position. The Corvette's driving position is not bad, especially for someone as tall as me, but the Civic, which is a more compact car, is really, really good, and the wheel and the shifter in particular are very easy for me to get into a position that six and a half feet does not have trouble fitting in, and I'm in a good driving position. Also, when I reviewed the Mazda 3, I noticed that in order to get the seat back far enough from my height, I had to be behind the B-pillar, whereas in the Civic, I'm not, and I can get in and out of the car much easier. The other thing worth noting is the infotainment system. The Corvette's infotainment system is basically the one that GM used, I mean, from the 90s. I had a 96 Firebird when I was uh, younger, uh, much younger and the radio in that was almost identical to the radio in the 2002 Corvette that I have now, which is to say, generally pretty awful. In the time period, it wasn't that bad. The Civics is not up to the latest and greatest standards. It's a little slow to react, and Apple CarPlay boots up a little, a little more slowly than it did in the, in the Mazda I had, but the breadth of functions that it has. I mean, this comes fully loaded with Apple CarPlay navigation. Um, obviously, you have a backup camera, which you know was a dream in 2002. It's so far ahead of what was available in the Corvette at the time period. And of course, you could say, well, I mean, that's the time period, but that's the point of the video is that we've gone 17 years, 17 years of progress, and look what you can get in what is essentially a family car. It also has to be noted that the Corvette, my Corvette sticker, I got the sticker. You can order many of them from the National Corvette Museum. I have the original window sticker for my Corvette. It was over $44,000 in 2002 money. Now this Civic cost $36,000, which is not inconsequential in today's money. However, adjusted for inflation, the Corvette sticker price would be a lot closer to $50,000. So you have a $36,000 family car with over 300 horsepower that can handle nearly as well as the Corvette on the stock tires, not on the Firestone Firehawks that I have, but on the stock tires, because those Goodyear Eagle F1s were trash when they came out. They were moderately grippy, they rode terribly, uh, they were incredibly harsh. Whereas these bespoke Continentals that come with the Civic Type R have phenomenal grip and are far more comfortable than little rubber band tires have any right to be. Another thing worth noting is that when compared to the Corvette, 
the Civic steering has a lot more weight and feel. Now, some people have complained that in R mode, the Civic steering is artificially heavy, and I, I would agree, it's a bit much in R mode. However, the feedback that you get from the wheel, oddly enough, because you're driving through the front tires and not the rear tires, you have this sense of, of grip. There's, there's pretty much no torque steer in the Type R, which, which is some kind of witchcraft, and, and we mentioned that in the last video. It, it's insane. But the thing that's so interesting to me is that when you can feel the tires attacking the road, going for that grip, trying to claw into the pavement, you, you get this tactile feedback through the rack that is missing in the C5. The C5 had accurate steering, but it was rather numb. Uh, there's not much difference in the C5 between uh, I can feel the road, I can't feel the road, I know the car is turning, I know where it's pointed, but I don't exactly know what's happening at the front contact patches. Uh, do I have grip? Is it slipping? Uh, it's more likely to oversteer than understeer. But the Civic gives you a level of feedback that is rare, not just in cars, especially in modern cars. As more cars move away from hydraulic steering and they move into electric assist steering, the Civic is offering you a much more engaging experience through the rack than the Corvette did in 2002, which had hydraulic steering. So that's an interesting thing that I thought in 17 years of progress, you're getting this front wheel drive economy car, family car, that's giving you the sensations that you wanted from this flat out sports car in 2002. But surely it's not that simple, right? Surely the Civic Type R can't beat the Corvette in every single way, in every single category. Well, no, of course not. That's not the point. The point is that the Civic Type R is set up to be a family car. This is still a purpose-built sports car. And this is still powered by one of the greatest, if not the greatest mass-produced engine of all time, the LS1. Now the Civic Type R's four-cylinder turbocharged 306 horsepower is impressive, but the Corvette's 350 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque naturally aspirated from the legendary LS1 just can't be beat. The car leaps off the line instantaneously and it, it pulls with the way only a naturally aspirated V8 can. The four-cylinder turbo is a lot of fun and you get that cool turbocharged feeling, but it can't match the instant power of a V8. Not any day of the week. Also, if we're being honest, you can't match the sound either. I don't know if V8s are gonna be around that much longer, that's up for debate, but the sound of the V8, especially enhanced by the Billy Boat bullet exhaust that I have here on the Corvette, Civic Type R can't even come close. Another area where the Corvette matches or beats the Civic Type R is in handling. Now I know I said the Civic Type R is an amazing handling car, especially for a four-door hatchback, but the Corvette is big and wide and it wears very wide tires and there's just simply no getting around physics. On a mountain road, the Corvette feels large because it is, but it also is a lot wider and more planted than the Type R. The Type R is dartier and it'll cut inside a line a lot tighter than the Corvette, but the Corvette has an endless supply of grip. And if you upgrade the tires as I have, the Corvette has even more grip and it never runs out. You'd have to be stupid to be quite honest on a mountain road to run out of grip. Not to mention that in 2002, the Corvette came with a fantastically advanced traction control system. It's not the performance traction management that's on the current generation of Corvettes and that debuted in the C6, but the traction control in the C5 in 2002, which went standard across the line, is amazing. And it even comes with a competition mode that will allow slip angles and some degree of wheel spin. This was almost unheard of in the early 2000s, unless you were Ferrari and GM had it on the Corvette. Also, if you're tall like me, the C5 Corvette was fantastically roomy. It's amazing how much space they packed into this car. And in some ways, it's roomier than the Civic. I've got a giant door opening because the car only has two doors and I don't have the B pillar next to me, no matter how the seat is adjusted. Now the seats themselves are horrifically bad in a car with this much power. But if you are tall like me, you fit snugly because you can brace your knee against the center console and the door and the seats don't really matter all that much. The steering wheel doesn't telescope but it does tilt and if you have long arms like I have then it's not a problem. Now if you're of average height and average build you probably find yourself flopping around the interior of the C5 Corvette which is made out of really cheap plastic but you have to ask yourself how much does that matter? 
We're talking about a car that is built around one of the greatest engines of all time. The powertrain in the C5 Corvette led by the LS1 and the rear transaxle is amazing and it set the tone for all Corvettes from 1997 up until this year, 2019, because the C8 is going mid-engine. And I think that the leap forward pioneered by the C5 has a lot to do with that. So in some ways, the technology was way ahead of its time in 2002. And we can knock the car for being not that much better than what a Civic Type R can do in 2019. But in 2002, this car was an order of magnitude ahead of where Corvettes had been previously. So is the Type R objectively better than the C5 Corvette? I would say in some ways yes and in some ways no, and I know that sounds like a little bit of a cop-out, but after driving them back to back, it's fascinating to me how similar the performance can be, but how each car still has its strengths. I know at the end of the day you can't directly compare a four-door hatchback with a two-door sports car coupe, but it's interesting to look at where technology has gotten us and how much of the performance of this car you can achieve in something like the Type R. And I'm sure as any enthusiast would tell you, there's a certain character to a car that makes you happy, that lets you bond with it, that forms that relationship. Is the Type R amazing for what it can do? Yes, and I absolutely would get one as a dad of two growing girls who needs that kind of space but also appreciates the power and the performance. However, as someone who has loved Corvettes since he was little, a lifelong Corvette fan who has a C5 Corvette, I have to say there's something about this car's brute power and its unapologetic attitude and the fact that GM just shamelessly said, who cares what the interior looks like? Put the best V8 ever made under the hood and people will buy it regardless of its Tonka truck interior. I just love that. That devil may care attitude that yielded one of the most important sports cars in American car history. You gotta appreciate that, at least on some level. So where does that leave us with the Type R and the Corvette and the March of Progress? Honestly, I don't know. And if you're a car enthusiast and you've been watching what the supercar makers like McLaren and Ferrari and Porsche have been doing, it's an interesting question because it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight. It's taken us 17 years to get to the point where a Honda Civic is arguably more engaging to drive, puts up similar performance numbers, and has more space, capacity, and cargo volume than a Chevrolet Corvette did in 2002. We've already seen this with the electrification going mainstream. Companies like Tesla are showing us that performance, capacity, and economy don't have to be mutually exclusive. So what will we see translated into our performance cars? Will family sedans just generally be amazing performers? Will it not cost that much money? I mean, at scale, you're looking at a significantly reduced cost to get a Civic with the performance capabilities of a Corvette. None of us knows where the future is going. None of us knows what the future of transportation will hold. But I'm encouraged by the fact that the March of Progress has yielded two things for us, the enthusiasts, to enjoy. One is more performance, two is at a better price. At the end of the day, that's all we could ever ask for. So I hope you found some value in this comparison. I thought it was an interesting topic to explore and the more time I spent with the Civic Type R, the more it had me thinking about the possibilities of where transportation, especially family transportation, can go. Because one thing I've said a couple times on Instagram and in my previous review of the Type R was that this might very well be the perfect dad car for the car enthusiasts like me because I can take the girls where they need to go and I can put all their stuff in it. My wife thinks it doesn't look too bad. She's not as intimidated by it as she is the Corvette. What more could you ask for? If you like this type of video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I appreciate the support. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and I'd love to have you be part of this community. Until next time, this is Jax. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Overall though, the interiors and the material, material, material. By the way, there's a plane going overhead right now, but if there's just some incessant background noise, it's because this guy pulled up in his Dodge Ram with a giant trailer and he decided to park just right over there and just idle. You know, I'm in a public park and he's just sitting in a giant Dodge Ram idling in the parking lot.
clearly doing something here, buddy. But it's fine. Just sit there and idle and, you know, waste all that gas towing your trailer full of probably dead bodies or murder equipment. I, I don't know what it is, but it's... And we've already seen this with Tesla. I always say Tesla. For some reason, that bothers people. Sorry. They, oh, one guy said, you're not from South Africa like Elon Musk. You have to say Tesla. And I said, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. And I say Tesla. I'm sorry. I'm like, perfect time to film. And it's a perfect time for a plane to fly over. And it's a perfect time for the people next to me to get in their car with their kids and their dogs. Whatever. Like, bug crawling down my back freaking ant biting me, man. What did I do to you? I'm not even by an anthill. I'm standing in the middle of the street. Why the hate? Huh? Ant. Why the hate? I mean, look, if you don't like my video, just dislike it. You don't have to bite me.